we're going to go ahead and get started. So if you all could grab your coffee and your breakfast and have a seat. It's so fun to hear all the buzz and conversation and excitement in the room. So good morning. Welcome. Welcome to CCYP's fifth annual Communities Breakfast. Uh, my name is Ann Van Vleck. I am a Giving Circle member, and I am the director of CCYP, and it is my great honor and pleasure to welcome you all here this morning. On behalf of the entire board of directors and staff, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your incredibly busy schedules. I know that June is an intense month for all of us, so for you to be here, we really appreciate it, and we also appreciate you sharing the vision that is so ingrained in what CCYP is doing of a healthy, vibrant Cape Cod for tomorrow. <laughs> the mission of CCYP is to connect the emerging workforce and future leaders, to engage them in our community, and to help support their intentions and their vision to advance their lives both personally and professionally. I continue to hear from our sponsors, from our supporters, from our members, community leaders, business owners, our funders, that this organization and CCYP is critical to the future of Cape Cod. I have some important welcomes that I need to make. First and foremost, we are lucky to have State Senator Vinny DiMacito here this morning. Thank you for joining us. I know we also have County Commissioner Leah Kakunas in the room. Leo, good morning. Thank you for coming. And I believe Mary Pat Flynn was also joining us. I don't know if Mary Pat has arrived yet this morning, but thank you all for your support and for uh, hearing the work that CCYP is working on. We also have a very important thank you to our presenting sponsor this morning, uh, Cape Cod Five. Cape Cod Five has been a longtime supporter um, really a friend of CCYP since the beginning, and we are grateful we have so many Cape Cod Five. We have two full tables of our members here, and we're going to hear from Dorothy Savary uh, momentarily. So thank you, Cape Cod Five, for your support and all that you do for CCYP. We couldn't do the important work that we do of connecting, engaging, and advancing young professionals here on the Cape without the critical support, financial in kind, of our supporters and sponsors. Uh, our premier sponsors today, Cape Cod Five, the Cooperative Bank of Cape Cod, and Cape Cod Healthcare, all of whom are here and represented today, and we gratefully appreciate all that you do for us. I also want to do a shout out to our underwriter sponsors, many of whom are in the room. Again, we couldn't do our work without them, and also our sponsor level sponsors. So take a look at all of these logos. These are the businesses in the community that are really supporting the work that we do. Um, I also want to do a shout out uh, of gratitude, really. Um, we have Gary Sheehan in the room. I believe Mike Robinson is here. They are the two founders of CCYP. We are constantly reminded of their vision and idea that we are all working as a community so hard together to continue this vision of a healthy Cape Cod, of young professionals that are staying, thriving, and committed to staying on Cape Cod. So last year we launched our Next 10 campaign, and it's really uh, our first fundraising campaign ever focused on how we can ensure that the work of CCYP that has been happening for the last 10 years can continue, not only the next 10, but in perpetuity, so that all of you who feel so young and starting out as young professionals on the Cape, so that your children can stay and thrive and their children can stay and thrive, it's really about a healthy, vibrant Cape Cod of tomorrow. So these are influ influencer leadership uh, businesses who have helped support at a cumulative level of $20,000 or more for the Next 10 campaign. We have our uh, Engagers Club and our Connectors Club, who are also huge supporters of the organization. So 
it is my great pleasure now to introduce a woman who really doesn't need an introduction. Uh, Dorothy Savarese is the president and CEO of Cape Cod Five. Um, she has an incredibly long list of accolades and accomplishments, um, which I will read now. She's the chairman, president, and CEO of Cape Cod Five. She started her career there in 1993, and through perseverance and grit, uh, became the president and CEO in 2005, which happened to be the same year that CCYP was formed. She currently serves as the chairman-elect of the American Bankers Association and will become the second woman ever to serve in the role of chairman, leading the country's largest banking trade group. Quite an accomplishment. The American Banker Magazine named Dorothy to its list of the 25 most powerful women uh, four consecutive years with that prestigious award. Um, she's also the past chairman of the Cape Cod Chamber of Commerce Board. I had the pleasure of, of serving while she was the past chair on that board. She's a member of the board of directors at Gosnold of Cape Cod. Obviously, um, important work to be done there on the Cape. Um, so again, long list of accomplishments and accolades, but anyone who knows Dorothy really can tell when you have a conversation with her, her true commitment to the community, her true commitment to improving things and the way of life around her, and just her genuine interest in helping others. She's, um, she's an amazing woman, and I am proud to know her and to work with her. So without further ado, Dorothy Savarese. You know, she added the perseverance and grit part. I, I hope you guys know that, right? Well, good morning, everybody. It's, oh, this is the second time I've followed a tall person on a podium this week. These things are like anacondas. Um, on, on behalf of everybody at Cape Cod Five, including those that are opening the doors this morning, I do want to welcome you all. We're delighted to be the presenting sponsor this morning. It's really you all that are doing all the work. We're just writing a check here, um, and we're just so happy to do it. Um, you know, Cape Cod Five has a special responsibility um, as the largest local bank uh, on Cape Cod, and as a mutual bank, you know, we're focused on serving the people and the institutions and the businesses in this community. And um, it is a remarkable community. I did just fly in last night. Occasionally, I run off and do some speeches for ABA. And uh, whenever I cross that bridge, you know, my blood pressure goes down, and I just sigh. It's such a beautiful place to live, work, play, and create. And um, over the winter, I had what was supposed to be a very short lunch with Anne. Uh, and we sat down. We both had really tight schedules, but we said we wanted to get together, and uh, we ended up missing all of our next appointments. Because what, what we realized, and what we've always realized, is there's such an intertwining between the missions of both of our organizations, and our, our priorities are so similar in terms of housing and economic development and entrepreneurialism and attracting and developing young leaders. And um, this week, I heard about a study that I thought was very interesting. And in that study, it said that millennials, and you know you're, if you are one, I'm not going to call you out. Um, <laughs> and sometimes it's used as a bad word, and I'm sorry about that. But um, that the primary reason that they used to feel engaged with an organization, with their employer, was because they trusted the leaders. And that's actually changed. And now, what they've learned through the study, and it was a global study done with many companies, is that employees feel engaged when they feel that the leaders see a future that they can believe in, and when they can see themselves in that future. And for me, I thought that that is an insight into why CCYP's approach is so promising and has been so effective. Um, you know, uh, Anne mentioned that reacting to the outmigration of about a third of the people between 25 and 44, um, both Gary and Michael 
uh, decided to give birth to this remarkable organization. And um, John Allen is here from the JFK Museum and recently honored their effort uh, in improving our community, and this is our community breakfast, with a Founders Community Leadership Award. Can we applaud them again, by the way, for that? Because, you know, it, it shouldn't have just taken the out-migration um, to stimulate something like this. But one of the things that was remarkable is that you all didn't just look at the what. You probed the why. And so you delved into it in a variety of ways, including your Shape the Cape survey. And you've been laying out and coalescing an integrated approach now to making our community vibrant and healthy and a place to live, work, and play, and to connect, engage, and advance, as you would say. So you really focused on a lot of areas, including housing, personal development, professional development. And then the one key, and that's why we're here this morning, is the fact that you felt that community engagement was a critical part of what you needed to do. And you know, you begin with this wonderful base from which we're building here, this global destination that people, wherever I travel, people know Cape Cod with its incredible beauty, its um, uh, a, a wonderful second home and retirement uh, destination. And um, it also has so many incredibly promising elements of the blue economy, which you're going to be building on. You have an opportunity to shape this community into one in which you and your peers can create businesses and jobs, find fulfilling career paths, secure the education and mentoring you need to progress, and find appropriate housing. And you're gonna be doing this through all of your own unique efforts, like Jitka winning the Mousetrap Award and so many people in this room that we could talk about. And also through working with your colleagues here at CCYP through the Shape the Cape Summit, the Career Connect Scholarship Program we're about to hear about, and the Giving Circle in which the recipients are just about to be uh, revealed and in stretching out of your comfort zone and in serving on boards and town committees. And, and Vinny and uh, Leo can mentor you on this, running for office. You know, at Cape Cod Five, we've always felt like we're stewards of our 161-year-old institution, trying to make it relevant and valuable for the people that we serve today, and then handing it off to the next generation. It's now time for that generational change to happen on Cape Cod. This is your community. You're its future. And with all the energy and creativity and hard work that I see whenever you all get together, I see a wonderful future, and I see you in it. So thank you very much for being here this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, I gotta wrestle the anaconda now. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Dorothy, for your leadership in the community, for your uh, leadership with your organization, and for being such a supporter of CCYP. Uh, your words are greatly appreciated. Um, so I'll introduce myself. For those of you that do not know me, my name is, let's see, Matt Cronin. Uh, I'm the board uh, chair of CCYP. I want to start by apologizing. I have a, a, a raspy voice. and. It's not because I yell at my son's Little League team, I swear, I swear, I swear. Although they did have a nice walk-off win against the Cardinals last night, number one team in the league. It's allergies, I swear, it's allergies. 
So I'm going to start with a survey real quickly. Um, I am a member of the CCYP Giving Circle. I'd like to ask that anyone else that is a member of the CCYP Giving Circle please stand up and stay standing. Fantastic. All right. Everyone who is either a member or whose organization is a member or a sponsor of CCYP, please stand up. All right, more, fantastic. Everyone who has volunteered at all for CCYP, please stand up. Everyone who has gone to a CCYP event, please stand up. Okay, is there anyone, now we're gonna shame people that are not standing, I'm just kidding. No, uh, I want you to look around the room. The important point here is that we are doing this work together. We are part of a one energetic, supportive, dynamic, positive, progressive community. So give yourselves a hand and then sit down. <laughs> so I'm a numbers guy. Uh, so I'm going to give you a bunch of numbers over the next few minutes. Uh, and Anne will bring us along here. Uh, over the past 10 years, uh, CCYP has grown to be an organization with two distinctive roles. Number one, we're a membership organization. So uh, when Gary and Mike started this, I think there were 15 members. You can see right now, we've grown exponentially to 1,200 members, over 300 businesses and sponsors, and uh, 79 nonprofit partners. Uh, that, and by the way, with all the work that CCYP does, I'm gonna throw out another number real quickly. That number is two. That's the number of staff, <laughs> full-time staff that CCYP has. Uh, Catherine Baker and Ben Black do wonderful work. <laughs> and that's true, sometimes we forget that. <laughs> it's really unbelievable the work uh, that they do along with our volunteers, um, you know, uh, tremendous work. Uh, role number two. We're kind of, we like to, maybe it's a, a bit narcissistic, but we like to think of ourselves as the quarterback, the quarterback of the Shape the Cape initiative. We heard a little bit about it before, launched in 2013. We commissioned a Shape the Cape survey and a report authored by the Dukakis Center uh, out of Northeastern University. And what we were told, what we heard uh, from that survey was that the Cape's young professionals wanted to Number one, remove barriers around civic involvement and engagement. Number two, they wanted professional development, mentoring and peer network programs. Number three, access to affordable housing. So what we're gonna do, what, what, uh, what we've done as an organization is we've really taken those three areas and we've driven ourselves around those areas. Those are our areas of focus as an organization. Um, and you're going to hear from three different CCYP board members that will talk about what's going on in those areas in the community, what CCYP is doing to help uh, move the needle, so to speak, in those areas as well. So a few things that we've started to do, um, you know, from this survey, we'll, you'll hear more about the Mentor Exchange Program, which we've started uh, with grant money from, uh, seed money from the Commonwealth and have run for two years, very successful program thus far. You'll hear about the Shape the Cape speaker series, which is focused on civic involvement and engagement. Uh, some of you in the room uh, joined us a couple weeks ago. We took an idea uh, that's been about five years in the making, and we had our uh, first Shape Your Cape Summit, which was uh, very successful. We'll talk a little bit about more, a uh, little bit more about that, excuse me. And uh, we'll also talk more about the Giving Circle which engages members in philanthropy. We ask all the members, about 70 members right now, to contribute uh, you know, what they can, and we get together, and we will report out later what we've decided. We're gonna give out $10,000 uh, to nonprofits in the community of money that we have raised and have collectively decided as a giving circle constituency uh, to distribute to these wonderful nonprofit organizations. So, the other thing that we do, uh, you know, you know about some of the jobs work, right? So CCYP continues to be a great conduit for employers and employees. In the past year, if we, if we move along here, we have uh, about 321 jobs that have been posted on the website. I went on, uh, I think it was last night, and there were 45 
jobs that were posted. Interior, uh, interior designers were looking for uh, legal assistance, so these jobs are all posted there. Everything from engineers to IT managers, HR managers, and everything in between. They're all out there. 51,000 hits in the past year. Uh, so that's been very successful. You can see the trends in terms of the numbers of jobs posted and the, jobs hit, uh, and the job hits as well. Uh, one of our most recent accomplishments I talked about was this uh, two weeks ago was the Shape Your Cape Summit. And uh, you can see some of the numbers up there. This was a brainchild of uh, past president Chris Ward. I'm not sure if Chris is with us uh, uh, this morning or not. There, okay, fantastic. Thank you, sir. A hand for Mr. Ward. And there was a great, great group of uh, the summit conference that uh, uh, you know, worked on this summit committee under the reins of uh, Mr. Bill Scotty here and uh, put together an event that was uh, what I'd call very valuable to our members. Uh, it was a hugely successful event. You can see some of the numbers here. We had 271 people, 21 nonprofits, 14 moderators, a bunch of panelists and sessions and exhibitors really focused on those areas that I talked about before, those three main areas, three main tenets. And as you can see, what we did was we surveyed folks afterwards, and the, uh, we got a statistically relevant uh, survey sample for those stati statisticians in the audience um, that showed us that 92% uh, of the attendees would recommend that others attend in the future, and 65% of the people that came left with, a clear, with clear action steps that will enrich their lives on the Cape. So this was definitely a, a, an effort of, of value and uh, years in the making. And thank you for everyone that attended and had a part in it. So the other thing we talked about is the Giving Circle. Again, uh, I described it a little bit. Uh, launched in 2015. Uh, we ask, we have about 70 members right now. We're really looking to increase that membership, by the way. Uh, and uh, by the way, we will send out an email uh, that you will receive uh, either today or early tomorrow. Uh, and it will have a link if you're interested in being a part of the CCYP uh, Giving Circle. You also have materials uh, on your tables. But again, uh, members make monthly donations. And uh, ultimately, those dollars are distributed to the nonprofits that we'll talk about in the community uh, through a grant, through an RFP grant process. Uh, there are also dollars, as you can see, that continue to support CCYP's operations and the establishment of an endowment for CCYP so that we can continue this work uh, moving forward. So what we're going to do now is I will call up those uh, three individuals. And uh, you know, let's hear about some of the work uh, that is going on in this, uh, in this area, in these three areas. Um, first, I would like to welcome up Sarah Colvin Nelson. And Sarah uh, does about 5,000 things. The one that we put on the slide here is that she's the news coordinator for the town of Barnstable. And she's going to talk about the work that's going on in our community and through CCYP in regards to civic engagement. Sarah. It's not really 5,000 things, it's more like 4,999. Let's get it straight. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sarah Colvin Nelson, uh, news coordinator at the town of Barnstable. I'm also a member of the Giving Circle, and I think that the contribution I make to the Giving Circle to me is more valuable than the gym membership that comes out of my wallet every month, and I don't go, and so think about it that way, and you're, you're giving back to the community as opposed to just thinking that you'll get a little bit more in shape. So I'm here today uh, to talk a little bit about civic engagement. We'll see if this plays. It does, good. Um, we can spend a lot of time thinking about the issues, talking about the issues, posting about the issues on Facebook, but if we're going to move the needle, if we're going to shape the cape, then we need to get involved. And we've found that our members are getting involved. They're learning a little bit more about getting involved. Um, we've gone around to our open houses, to our Community Connect uh, events, and, and question folks on how they are engaging, and we found a, a great response. But people still do want to learn more. But the question is, what is civic engagement? It's, when we think about it, it's about ongoing, sustained engagement in issues, networks, and communities about which people care. And I think, thankfully, here on Cape Cod, we care a heck of a lot about our community and where we're going. 
And civic engagement can mean a number of things. It can mean volunteering. It can mean board service. It's simple as going to town meeting or as simple as going to vote or perhaps running for office, uh, all sorts of things like that. So last year, we asked our members about civic engagement and 60% of young professionals want to learn more on how to connect with local government, nonprofits, and civic groups, which are really the, the key areas in which that folks can get engaged and learn a little bit about more. They're hungry. We're hungry for more information. We want to take a look at all sorts of things, board basics, how to gain experience while giving back. There are a plethora of nonprofit organizations here on Cape Cod, all of which have boards of directors, all of which are always actively seeking new members, younger members, bridging the gap between what is my area of interest and how I get involved and what that time commitment is, we can help with that. How to participate in local decision making, feel confident at town meetings. Town meeting is, is a wonderful form of government, but it can be really confusing. Unless you spend a lot of time looking at the warrant, figuring out what's going on, you can look at it and say, I'm not even gonna go there. Six or seven hours at, at a town meeting can be a little bit daunting. We can try to help demystify that because it is important for us to have a voice in our governmental process. And again, how our lo local government functions, how decisions are made at a municipal level. And this is also important as well. Dorothy in her remarks mentioned serving on those town boards and committees. It is crucial when we think about housing projects that need to get passed, when we think about changes in zoning laws, when we think about decisions that are being made that affect our quality of life and our day-to-day -day life, we need to have a voice at the table. That is civic engagement. So let's talk a little bit about what we're doing to move the needle, to bridge the gap for young professionals who want to become more civically engaged, to educate our membership about those local issues, to empower our young professionals to be in a position. So how do we demystify it? A number of ways. We can act as, as mentors and leaders. Last October, we held our initial Shape the Cape speaker series, Young Elected and Connected. We brought four uh, local young elected officials to the Cape Cod Community Media Center. As you all came out this morning at 7.30, we got people to come down to Dennis Port 7.30 in the morning on a Friday in October to watch a live television broadcast. Uh, our Cape and Island State Senator Dan Wolf was there as our keynote speaker. Um, and we learned from these folks who have put themselves out there, who have seen the challenges and the rewards of becoming elected, whether it's school committee or a board of selectmen or a town council, um, a, a myriad of state representative as well, um, and really were able to learn. And we heard from our members after that event that they felt a little bit more willing to stand up and participate. They learned a little bit more. It was a little less of a veil in between those who are elected and who we are. So is it making a difference? That's a good question. I think it is. Um, we recently, after, uh, right before this event, as a matter of fact, put a survey out and said, are we making an impact on civic engagement? Um, I look around the Cape and I see young people running for office. I see young people participating in boards, committees, and commissions. I see people asking more questions and wanting to learn more about how to become engaged, understanding the connection between making a difference here on Cape Cod and how you can have a voice at the table. We're hearing people say, I'm better connected. I'm more productive with my involvement in the community. I serve on multiple boards and committees, not just me, all of you. CCYP enhanced my passion for volunteering. I ran for a position on school committee last year. You have opened many doors for me. So the work is not done. We continue to do it and we are excited about continuing our work with civic engagement through CCYP. It is my pleasure now to kind of put our money where our mouth is, right? And that's a part of what the Giving Circle does is to help fund initiatives uh, that can help um, to help shape a vibrant and healthy Cape Cod. Um, Cape Cod Community College is a wonderful place. I'm a graduate of Cape Cod Community College uh, many moons ago. Um, it's a wonderful place in our community, a launching pad, whether you're just out of high school looking to kind of figure out where you want to go in your education, or you're an older student looking to go back. There are so many things at Cape Cod Community College uh, for, for everyone. And so I would like to, I'm excited that I get to present the first Giving Circle grant. Uh, I would like to call up Susan Miller. She's the Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs at Cape Cod Community College. Here she is.
So Susan, thank you so much. And we are so excited that Cape Cod Community College is taking a leadership role to support a community engagement speaker series, um, planning a key town, local, and county officials hosted on campus to speak to students and community members to promote a greater understanding of local civil life, civil civic life, and civic responsibilities. So we are giving you a thousand dollars from the the Giving Circle to fund that speaker series. Thank you so much. Uh, I am thrilled to uh, accept this award on behalf of Cape Cod Community College, and I need to give a shout out to the people who are behind this proposal. Kristen Trawick is the coordinator of civic engagement and civic learning at the college. Dean Dave Zamba, who kind of mentors that uh, program through the college, uh, and Georgia Carvalho, uh, who is the grants developer on our campus who takes our ideas and puts them into words so that people like your grant uh, review committees can read them and uh, appreciate what we're trying to do. So thank you very much. Thank you much, so much, Susan. And uh, we really look forward to seeing the Civic Engagement Speaker Series at Cape Cod Community College. And hopefully CCYP uh, can help out a little bit more with that. Um, so many issues uh, here on Cape Housing is one of those large issues and to talk a little bit about uh, how CCYP is moving the needle in terms of improving housing, I welcome Ryan Castle, one of our newest members of the Board of Directors. Thank you, Sarah. Um, my name is Ryan Castle. I'm a member of the CCYP Board of Directors. I'm also the CEO of the Cape Cod and Island Association of Realtors and MLS and I'm a Giving Circle member. Um, so housing is a major component that we keep hearing about how to move the needle and that it's preventing the young professionals from locating here, from staying here, and from being able to achieve better things here. And so as CCYP, we have been starting to move the needle on housing um, and want to go over a little bit about where, why we're moving the needle where we are based on the data and then how we're moving that needle and then also to honor some organizations that are moving that needle out in the community as well. So last year we did a community um, housing survey um, from CCYP to find out what people want to do and what kind of housing they want to rent, what kind of housing they want to own. Um, as you see, people still want to own house and they want primarily a single family house, but they do want it in different ways as well. Um, and so 40% you know, want access to the walking and the biking and the other things in a, in a more of a town center format. Um, you also found that um, lo they're not as confident they can get lending um, to buy that house that they want. So then let's look at how we can educate, how we can provide more programs in that realm to help the young professionals feel more confident. Um, so only 64% were familiar with home, first time home buyer present, um, programs and 75% are interested in taking one. So that's a good example of the need out there to provide more of these programs. And then 80% believe that purchasing a house on Cape Cod is a great investment. So obviously that makes a lot of people in this room who rely on housing because um, we just remember that you know, for every house transaction, for every home built, you're getting two permanent jobs on the Cape and those are year round jobs. And so it plays into everything else that we do. And then the, the models that they want. Um, a little bit different and so when you go through and you see there's a lot of people that said that we want different kinds of models available on the Cape than what we traditionally have had. So then what do we do? And that's the question. So where do we go on this? So the Housing Task Force of CCYP has been working on programs on education, on making sure that the members know what's more available to buy or to rent and how they can access that information. And then also the main thing that they've been working on is CCYP has its first statement of support of, an, of a new model of a new bylaw to promote more accessory dwelling um, units on the Cape in partnership with the Smarter Cape Partners, large conglomerate of business organizations. And we're making progress on that end. We're making progress in the fact that we, there's now, we've now, the Smarter Cape Partners have put together a proposal. They are now actively pushing that proposal, and they are. you'll start hearing more about it. We've started engaging with the towns. Um, so if you do know a planning board member, if you do know 
um, economic development board member at, at, in your town or a selectman, start talking to them, start telling them that every town, and th through our research and through our survey, every town needs a better assessor unit um, bylaw than they have right now. There's not one town that has a bylaw that is working really well. And so every town can have an improvement. And, and this has been looked at by land use planners. It's been looked at by everyone and it's good. So, you know, a, as we go forward, make sure this has to happen at the local level. It has to happen town by town. It's gonna to be a large undertaking. And I would say, talk to, talk to any planning board members, talk to any board of selectmen, start talking it up because in the next several months, they're gonna start seeing more and more of it as the push comes on. So um, please let them know that. Um, and that's just the start of the apple to try to start moving that needle on housing. Um, to do that, to move that needle, we also see some community groups that are doing really well. So we want to honor them with the giving circle. Um, and let me talk a little bit about those, what we're giving out here today. So the two, or, the one organization I want to bring up right now, the Community Development Partnership. They're going to be, um, they're receiving a grant from the giving circle. It's for first time home buyer education. But as you traditionally think of the Community Development Partnership as a lower cape entity, but this actual grant is for first time home buyer education online. And so that everyone on Cape is gonna be able to access it, get more access to it. And so thank you, Community Development Partnership, and thank you. you can't see me <laughs> anyway um, I'd like to say thank you to Cheryl Kramer from Housing Assistance Corporation for your guidance in developing our online first-time home buyer program and just thank you so much to CCYP Giving Circle for helping us uh, empower more young families to be able to make financial decisions that will help them achieve their home ownership dreams thank you so much <laughs> Next organization I'd like to bring up, Housing Assistance Corporation. And this grant is to support the Housing Consumer Education Center to make them free to participants. Um, this these series um, is creating a budget, rebuilding your credit, and community resources. These grants offset the cost of those classes to be able to make them free to those participants. So thank you, Housing Assistance Corporation. Thank you so much. I just want to say thank you. Um, your money is going into work starting tomorrow night, letting people come and take classes that they no longer have to um, be charged for. So thank you, and we'll have some exciting people tomorrow night. And now I um, want to let you hear more about what CCYP is doing to move the needle on career development. Thank you, Ryan. My name is Mairead Graff, and I am a CCYP board member as well as a Giving Circle member. And as Matt mentioned earlier, according to the, Cape the Cape, Shape the Cape survey, our demographic was looking for more job opportunities, career advancement, and professional growth. This was no surprise. However, we needed that data in order to create programs like the Mentor Exchange Program. This past May, we successfully concluded our second year of the Mentor Exchange Program. We had 33 mentors. 36 mentees, 23 pairs, and three small groups. I can personally speak to the success of the program as this year I participated as a mentee. My mentor that I was partnered with helped me develop more of my professional style and helped me learn more about my professional style as well as develop professional goals and even achieve those goals. CCYP also held eight Mentor Mondays. Attendees learned about goal setting, work-life balance, their professional brand, as well as many other topics. As Matt mentioned earlier, CCYP has achieved success as well with the job board. This is a huge success for people that are looking for jobs on the Cape, that are even off Cape looking to move on to the Cape to get jobs, as well as for employers that are looking for those talented people to bring to their work. Another accomplishment that Matt mentioned was the launch of the first Shape Your Cape Summit. Yay! <laughs> there were there were three tracks that day that attendees could look at and could participate in workshops on. We had a personal growth path that people could take. We had a philanthropic growth path that people could take, as well as a professional growth path that people could take. 
24% of those responding to the summit survey said it has now helped them advance professionally, which is great. That was a goal that we had for the Shape Your Cape Summit. Um, so it's something that we achieved, as well as what Matt mentioned earlier, that 66% who attended now have clear action steps that will enrich their lives on Cape Cod. The morning keynote speaker at the summit, who is Sean Fitzpatrick from Cape Cloth, spoke about putting yourself out there and getting involved. You can't just expect, expect professional growth and success to happen overnight. It can't just magically happen either. You, if you're looking for help with career advancement or professional growth, CCYP and the Mentor Exchange Program can help you with that, as well as other organizations on the Cape, which brings me to our final two Giving Circle recipients, which I'm very happy to announce. Our first one is the YMCA, and this is going to support their Teen Achievers Program, which is helping at-risk youth on the Cape, and it's helping them to potentially attend and graduate from college and gain long-term employment, volunteer adult achievers from the Cape Cod Community Mentor Teen Achievers as they learn goal-setting, leadership, communication skills, workforce skills, etiquette, and service learning. Students receive help with college applications and financial aid forms and chaperone college tours that expose them to higher education and campus life. And of course, hopefully, we hope to come back and to get jobs on the Cape. So I'd like to bring up Laura Frisco, who is the Chief Operating Officer for the YMCA to accept this grant. Thank you very much. Our final grant recipient for our Giving Circle grants today is going to We Can, and this is going to a pilot program that they are creating. It's the GROW program, which stands for Get Results with Others Wisdom. It's a group pilot program, and they'll be learning and sharing experiences with six to eight women who are working to strengthen, expand, or start a business. It's led by an experienced businesswoman. GROW groups will have monthly assignments and discussions on key topics that come from the women themselves, as well as time for each woman to share their own progress and receive fat feedback. Topics such as accountability, cash flow, and hiring will be discussed. So I'd like to welcome up Andy Genster, Executive Director at Weekend, and Siobhan Kuhn, who's the development coordinator. And I'll also say that Siobhan is a 40 under 40 recipient this year. <laughs> We just want to say thank you, and I made Siobhan do this because she's practicing for her 40, <laughs> under 40 award for tomorrow, um, and she also wrote the proposal, but what you don't know is they made us do a two-minute video about our programs to um, present to the board, and it was a really, really incredible experience. We're very excited to get this, and we feel like strengthening the people who are on business on Cape Cod, allowing them to grow their businesses is going to make a big impact, and even though we're going to do it six to eight women at a time, we know it'll, it'll have that ripple effect. So thank you, CCYP. All right, so CCYP has given out significant dollars in scholarships through the year. I won't steal the thunder, but I'd like to invite up two people to present yet another scholarship to a very deserving young professional here. So without further ado, I'd like to invite up uh, Katrina Fricklin and Tim DeLuke. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Tim DeLude. I'm a board of director with CCYP. I'm also part of the Giving Circle, and this year I was honored to be part of the Career Connect Scholarship Committee. The Career Connect Scholarship is in its fifth year, and in partnership with the Cape Cod Foundation, it was created to invest in the emerging workforce that is the future of our region. We created the scholarship to help out people who are going back to school and furthering their careers. 
I'm thrilled to announce that to date, CCYP has given out 34 scholarships totaling $92,500, which is very impressive. <laughs> These 34 recipients embody what CCP is all about, and they really show what our mission is here for and how it has succeeded. They've started businesses, they've taken on leadership roles, and continually work to support our community. Thank you to the fellow Volunteer Scholarship Review Committee members for your time and commitment. We couldn't have made this difficult decision without you. Every year this decision gets tougher and tougher. There are so many deserving people who come looking to help themselves get along with their careers. And you know, this year was no exception. Um, we had a great group of people who applied, and it was, it was a very tough decision. Um, I'd like to introduce Katrina Fricklin, a fellow chair, and she's going to announce this year's recipient. Thank you, Tim. This year, the committee selected Laura Thorup, Cape Cod native. Laura graduated from Lesley University summa cum laude after graduating from our very own Cape Cod Community College. She is currently attending Boston University's satellite program where she will graduate in 2017 with her master's degree in social work. Her final step will be pursuing her license in clinical social work. Laura plans to utilize these degrees by working with those who face drug addiction on Cape Cod and has already secured an internship at Gosnells. Ms. Thorpe has volunteered at Cape Cod Children's Place, Big Brothers Big Sisters, and the Orleans United Methodist Church. During her tenure at 4C, she founded the Students Opposed to Pills Club called STOP in an effort to address the growing narcotic problem on Cape Cod. A former professional ballet dancer, for three years after graduating high school, Laura now teaches ballet at the Academy of Performing Arts and the Cape Cod Ballet Theater. Additionally, she's a single mother to her beautiful four-year-old daughter, Lily. Congratulations, Laura. We look forward to seeing your continued success on Cape Cod. you all so inspired um, what a morning all of this energy and momentum think of all of these people simultaneously working across the Cape moving the needle as we say helping to shape the Cape being part of the solution which is really what it's about we are all together trying to shape the Cape into a community that can support the future a healthy vibrant future so that young people can stay, so that if they choose the CAPE, they have a supportive network, they have supportive mentors, they have programs, they have scholarships, they have opportunities, and look at the Giving Circle members choosing other organizations. The collaboration is so obvious and so inspiring. Um, congratulations to all of the Giving Circle grant recipients. Congratulations to Laura and her daughter, who uh, I'm sure they will both benefit from that scholarship award. Um, so we're going to do a couple things. I have a couple housekeeping announcements. Um, but before I do that, I actually am going to steal from one of our founders uh, his closing remarks. I know it was mentioned that he gave, uh, that he and Mike were awarded. We've said it a few times, the JFK uh, Founders Leadership Award. Uh, that was just last week. And it was so inspiring and it was really validating of this idea that we are all continuing to work on that is so important and uh, to the vitality of Cape Cod. So uh, Gary, if you don't mind, I'm gonna steal your words. Um, these were his closing remarks uh, when he received his, his award. He said he closes with two humble requests. 
Give back to your community however you see fit. Find a young person to mentor, donate your time, write a check, engage with the people around you, vote. Find your passion locally and give back. Your community will be better for it and so will you. Appreciate what we have here and how lucky we all are. We're the ones, the people in this room also, who are lucky enough to call Cape Cod home. Don't fall into the trap of negativity and focusing on what can't be done here. Stand up, be proud that you are one of the lucky ones who gets to call Cape Cod home, then do what you can to make it a better place. The words of the CCYP founder, He's not even 40 and he's being quoted in, in speeches now. It's pretty outstanding, Gary. So um, thank you all for your time. Thank you for your investment in your community, which is what you're making by taking the time to be here and to support these organizations. Sincere thanks to the Giving Circle members. I also want to give my sincere thanks to the board of directors with whom I am so fortunate to work with and who do so much for this organization. Uh, shout out to Catherine Baker, wherever she is. She's amazing. Um, so the housekeeping notes are back to business bash, 10th year this year, September 29th. New location, we are at the Barnstable Airport this year. So moving over, we're taking over the airport, so it's going to be fabulous. Um, and we're also going to be uh, raffling off a car. Uh, Tracy VW is partnering with us and we're going to be starting to sell those raffle tickets, so stay tuned for that. Um, we're going to do our second annual, or maybe it's our third annual, Shape Your Cape photo. So it's left arm strong, right? Yes. Right? Okay, so everybody has to stand up. And if you haven't seen the photos, you're going to see this one. And look at this, Cape Cod Proud. And what you do is you make your Cape Cod flex those guns, and point to where you live on the Cape, and everybody say, we're going to shape, shape the Cape. Shape the Cape. Right here. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, cheers, everyone. Have a great morning. Thank you all so much, and here's to Cape Cod and shaping the Cape. Yeah.